Hey, I'm Pete Deluski, and thanks for joining in for another episode of Inside BMX. And this time, we are graced with the presence of BMX royalty. We have Mariana Pajon. Mariana, how are you doing? I'm good, Pete. I'm back home and just uh, been in a really weird circumstances here, but just having fun and enjoying my family. That's really good, really good. So, you know, we, uh, we always talk about how, how well you've done in the sport and how many accolades and how many titles. And it's like, I tried to make a compiled list of everything. It's pretty impressive. Uh, four time UCI world champion, two times um, in the elite class, 10 UCI BMX World Cup wins, which is pretty cool. You've made 44 finals on the World Cup tour and you've had 26 podiums. So right there, that's a lot, you know. Um, you've also been multiple time uh, champion in Colombia, Continental, all different times. I can't even keep track of that one. I'm sure you, I'm sure you can, but it's going to be difficult. Um, you won the USA BMX title once. I believe you won the NBL Elite Women's title as well. That's so a lot of wins. And then, of course, the two-time Olympic gold medal champion. So um, with all of that being said, how do, how do, you know, we'll start with the easy question is like, how do you stay motivated um, winning so much and doing so many different, you know, races all over the world? But what keeps your drive going? What keeps you to be one of the best riders in the world? I think I've uh, done my sport for a lot of years. Um, what makes me motivated to do it every day and to see racing and to see competing and to see training, it's uh, because I love doing it. Um, no matter the results now, like every time I go to a race, obviously I focus on something I really want to achieve, but what really drives me, that really makes me train and be better, it's just that I love doing it. I cannot imagine my life without BMX or just doing something else. Um, it just makes me happy and I, that's why I'm doing it. I also know that I can be better. Every time I see a race, even the Olympics or a race I won, I know I could do it better. So that makes me hungry to, to, to be better and to make something, something different about it. That's very interesting to hear that you critique yourself like that so much. Um, with that being said, how much you love the sport, how are you dealing with this downtime where you're not able to go to the track, where you're not able to compete at races and uh, travel the world? I know we have different scenarios around the world. In Colombia, everything is closed. Uh, we cannot go out of our houses. Uh, we can just go one day per week to go on grocery. But every time, track is closed, the gyms are closed. So we're just spending time with the family, um, trying to keep motivated with beans. We go just every day to the gym, sprints, gym, sprints. That's what we're doing. Um, sometimes it's not easy. But when you have a goal, even if it's too far or we still don't know when we're going to race, um, I still want to be better. If it's in the gym, then I want to be stronger. The sprints, I just want to be quicker. So that's, that's what we do every day. So um, I think you, uh, you have a new you, – did you move into a new home recently? And you have a little yes, bit – um, you have a little bit of property, so you have the ability to do some stuff within on your own on your own property. Yeah, we are really um, happy to be here in these times. Um, we just moved, so we not only have time to to focus on our house, we just uh, get it ready every day. But we have um, a mini gate to do some gates. Um, we have a gym, a complete gym. We have a sprints uh, area, so we can go on the sprints even a mountain bike or road cycling. So yeah, it's, we just need a track, that's it. So we, we can be really creative on, on our training. And then for you, I'm sure you've been quite busy doing media, doing a lot of interviews like this. Uh, just talk about, because I, I don't know if people really understand how, how I, I'm not gonna, I wanna say important, but maybe, but how beloved and how much, um, how much, how many people in the, in Colombia look up to you and the things that you do outside the sport? Because 
one of the things I admire about you is you don't promote the fact of all the things you do and you do a lot of good for uh, underprivileged children and just different um, charities and you have your own foundation. But how much time and effort have you been putting into that? Because now people know you, they're able to kind of get a hold of you while you've been at home. Yeah, I'm not really in a social media or trying to, to tell people what I do. Uh, but BMX is huge here in Colombia and in a country that have cried a lot and have been through and struggled through a lot through history. Um, to have someone positive, someone trying to do good to their country and, and to promote positive things about Colombia around the world, um, they really appreciate it. So, yeah, it's, it's huge. I think um, my private life, it's over <laughs> since I won the Olympics. Um, it's crazy, but it has so many positive things. I can go out and tell people and leave a legacy, but not just that. But I'm trying to help people because they're facing a really bad time now. And because of this virus and pandemic, um, everything is closed. People that are used to live from like every day, they, they go and they try to get money to, to bring some food to their families. But now they, they don't have this. So, yeah, I've been really busy, even more than in my regular life. I've been doing this a lot of interviews conference and um, obviously with my foundation trying to to give food to people trying to um to protect them because they don't have like this essential things in life so they cannot protect themselves from this virus so yeah we're trying to do this it's crazy but i think uh, if we all do this together so it's gonna be faster and easier for them so yeah that's my life <laughs> Well, that's really good, and I'd like to I'd like to applaud you. I know a lot of people, like I said, in Colombia, love the things that you do outside of the sport, but they know you because of the winning two times um, Olympic gold. So we'll, we'll start talk about a little bit of the season. Um, early year with our races in um, in Australia, a lot of riders said they kind of weren't really ready for the racing. But for you, you know, you went there, and like you said, you wanted to have fun. You also looked a little bit different. You rode a little bit different, I think, from the end of last year. So talk about what it was like to get into the beginning of this racing season and how the first, basically for you, you only got to race that first weekend of World Cups in Australia. Yeah, so uh, the season started really good. Um, it was a big surprise for me because um, I ended up last year not feeling really strong or um, with the power I used to or the riding and not riding well. But um, when I uh, went to Australia, it was like, a really different story for me. It was a surprise. I, I just uh, want to say it because I didn't know what to expect, but it was amazing. I felt really good um, doing really fast laps, feeling really good on my bike and stronger. So yeah, we couldn't race many <laughs> races this year, but um, the two workups I, I could and um, some races here in Colombia, they're totally different and really motivated. And then, you know, with you going back to, you know, last year, year before having an injury, always being at the top of your class, the class has risen. You know, basically, I'm going to say there was a few girls, three or four girls that were at the top, and you've always been one of the ones that hover right around any time, maybe able to take a win. But that injury was at the time where it seemed like all the other girls really rose up as well. So how difficult was it for you, like say last year when you came back, I know you were happy to compete, but looking back at it, how difficult or, you know, what did you learn about yourself at the end of last year coming back and, you know, struggling a lot of times maybe to make the finals? Yeah, it was, it was not easy for me. It was uh, really challenging for me. Um, I have broke so many bones. I had so many injuries. Uh, but this one is the one that really um, made me realize so many things in my life. And even made me think if I should keep racing or training or doing what I love. Um, yeah, but what I told you in the beginning of, of our interview, I just love this. So that gave me, I think, the extra motivation to, to try and, and go back to my bike. But yeah, I went back to racing and um, the women's class have stepped a lot and um, yeah there are a lot of many young riders coming up and yeah they're really strong and riding really well so it wasn't that easy it wasn't 
like before, like, yeah, I broke so many things and just going back to a race and winning the race, it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't really hard, but now you have to really focus on the process and be really responsible, um, patience and just work hard to be there and feel better every time. I just have to be uh, really positive on the process I ha I'm having and I think I'm, I'm doing really well now. I was going to say, you're someone that's been very strategic on the way you've trained and prepared. So with this pushback, and like I said, you came into Australia not knowing what to expect. You had a good event. Now with the pushback, do you think that's an advantage to you? Or, you know, you get basically a whole year to, you know, to train. So I'm not sure how you felt, what percentage you felt of your old self um, at those events and what this could do as far as, like I said, with your scheduling on how you had your training presented towards um, the Olympics being this year, not next year. Yeah, totally. I have to be honest. Uh, I was ready mentally to be ready for Tokyo for July. Uh, I was there. I was ready. It was my opportunity. I was really happy that I was achieving everything and um, I was feeling better. But um, to give me more than one year, um, to be more prepared, to be faster, to be quicker, to have more time on my bike, obviously it's really good for me. It's positive. Um, I, I take it. <laughs> I was happy. I know what it takes to move uh, Olympics. Uh, I'm more what is happening around the world. What I'm telling people is that the Olympics is just something really small of what we are facing. Um, that doesn't matter if it's going to be this year, next year, or if we're not going to have the Olympics. We just want the hope for people and no, no more sadness or people that bad. For me, um, talking about uh, sports and my ability to just go and do my best, I think it's really positive to just have one more year to prepare myself. All right. So now let's get into some memories of yours. Um, you were, it, I, I can't think of a time, I try, I, even for myself, and I've known you since you were a little girl. German Medina introduced me to you. I think you were 13 or 14. And he said, this is going to be the one. You need to sponsor her. And I said, okay, okay. You know, and, and no disrespect. I heard that from so many people. And, but for some reason, you were just this happy little girl. You were at these races. And I remember watching you jumping some of the biggest jumps on the track. And I was like, okay, like, let's see. And then from there, it was, you know, the history has been pretty, pretty big for you. But um, your first year racing junior women, going into the world championships, I don't know how much before. I know you traveled between the U.S. a lot and uh, within, you know, within North America and South America. Um, but was the world championships your first year as a junior woman or second year as a junior woman? Was that like your first big um, race where everybody noticed you or and, you know, how how did that go for you from? going from these different, maybe, I'm not going to say smaller events, but these events to being on the world championship stage? Well, obviously, world championships are huge for every discipline or um, cyclist. Uh, but we have something really positive here in Colombia, um, South America, our continent, that we have a lot of races, um, that we have to go as the Olympic Committee, and we have the village, and... We have big races that everybody is expecting you to win or they are just watching you race. So I was, I think I was really into racing and traveling around the world since I was seven. Mm, that was my first world championships in Ballet in France. And then I started racing world championships every year. But then we had the Latin American championships and I, I raced my first race as um, Olympic cycle in Colombia, the, the Bolivarian Games, and we have a village, and we have, um, in like, every country has um, their, their apartments, and it's like a mini Olympics. So we were used to race these kind of races. Obviously, going to the junior years, it's really amazing going with the national team for my first time and being more professional. I know... It changes a little bit, and yeah, this time it was China, so it was like really far from home, and it was really amazing. I think we had a really good time there. And then for you, um, in 2008, you were too young, but what, when you watched the Olympics, what, what did you take away from watching those, the first BMX race in the Olympic Games? 
Yeah, that changed my, my life. Um, I was able to be in China for the whole month. Um, the Olympic, the International Olympic Committee took me um, to the village and I had the chance to, to be in the opening ceremony and um, watching all different disciplines. Um, BMX, obviously. I remember uh, being on a bus and watching um, Jill Kidner on the, on the street just riding her bike and Donnie Robinson and started screaming. And I really wanted to be there as a rider. Um, I knew that sometimes it will come to a reality. And yeah, that really motivated me to, to just be on the Olympics next, like the next four years. It was really fun. And then from you to go from that being a little girl on the sidelines watching this race to standing on top of the podium, how, like, a lot of people had penned you as being this big, you know, winner and champion. But when you actually did it, when did it, in, uh, in London, when did it hit you that you've achieved this goal that, you know, I don't know, as an athlete, it's got to be one of the biggest, you know, in the sporting side of things as an athlete, it's got to be one of the biggest achievements. When did it actually hit you that you achieved that goal, your first goal that you set by winning those games? It's crazy. It's crazy because uh, you don't realize that you have won. Um, so many days after the race, I realized I have, I have an Olympic gold medal in my hands. Um, I remember waking up the next morning after um, a final, and I had this, the medal just by my bed, and I, I just screamed. <laughs> I screamed because it was crazy, and... Then going back to Colombia, I was the second gold medal ever for our history of sports. So the whole country was expecting me to arrive to the country. And that's where I realized what I have won. It, it was crazy. One, it wasn't just a dream for this little girl, but a dream for the whole country. So it was crazy. I still hold the medals and still don't believe it. <laughs> And then you are the only two-time gold medalist from Colombia in the Olympics, correct? For Latin America, yeah. In so, um, a discipline, like individual discipline. So that's, that's pretty incredible. Okay, so, and from that, you, uh, I believe you were the, the flag bearer at one of the Olympic opening ceremonies. I'm, I mean, that was pretty, you know, for me, sitting, watching it on TV, watching the opening ceremonies, because they were so far before the Games. How big of an honor was that for you to do such, you know, such a high profile thing? Because, you know, in America, we love BMX racing, but the regular TV production doesn't care too much. And they focused yeah. in on you and talked about you and really spotlighted BMX um, for that. And I'm sure that had to be a great honor as well. It was, it was for me. That was the first gold medal I won on those Olympics. Um, being a flagger is, it's a huge honor, and the way they choose it here in Colombia, it's uh, by voting. So it was for me, it was a big surprise for a BMXer also to be recognized this far and and this huge in in a country they didn't know about this sport before. Um, it was huge to to know that the whole country wanted me to to just hold the flag on an open ceremony for the Olympics. It's huge, and I remember starting. Um, that day, it was just like a dream and just holding my flag going inside the stadium. It was, it was amazing. For me, that, that was a goal, my first goal for London. And so like it's, with that, I'm sure you have a ton of other memories. But let's get to the actual racing aspect. Um, one of your favorite memories from the sport of BMX racing is what? What, what race stands out to you? I have a lot of races that I look up to and I still go back um, to my computer, my memories and try to, to see them. Um, I've been through a lot and I think even racing with an injury. But I think the most challenging, challenging races that I did was for the World Championships at home. Um, 2016, even more challenging than the Olympics. Um, just racing at your home track with the whole country watching you. And yeah, the stands were full of people. And my family, they were there. And 
you know, the track <laughs> was named after you. And yeah, you have to. Win. Yeah. The track was made for you, so you have to. Um, I remember being third on time trials. Um, being, I don't know, I was devastated for that race because um, when I watched my, my race, like my lap, it was horrible. Like, what did I do? And I knew it was my head that wasn't there. I wasn't enjoying. The next day, like people keep telling me, oh, it's really cool to race at your home track. And I tell them, no, it's not that good. It's not that fun. Um, yeah, you have a lot of pressure um, under you and there is no choice. You have to win. So yeah, sometimes it's not that fun. And I think that's the most memorable race I ever won. So looking back at that lap, if you've been you know, through your head and watching it again, Anything in that lap uh, stand out that you did right, you did wrong? I mean, like you said, you like to critique your own racing, but that lap in general, like on the gate, what were you thinking? How did you, how was the process different for you? Because I know you like to look at every race as the same, but if anyway, what stands out about that from the moment you, you know, walked up to the gate, got in to the finish line, what, you know, talk us through the race and what you felt and how it, you know, what was different, if anything, on that, on that lap? I remember I came up to the race injured. I crashed in Papendal and I was injured at the first, uh, the first day I was back on the track was one day before the official practice. Um, I knew there was not so many chances I could do well, but I was feeling really good after the time trial race. Um, it was really sad for me, I was devastated. I couldn't even sleep, but the next day, Obviously, I felt my legs because that track was long, <laughs> is long, it's still um, it's the most technical track ever made for BMX or for gears. Um, we actually have like this cross section um, that we have to go through. And yeah, first trade was huge and I was tired. I remember going up to the gate for the main event and I couldn't feel my legs. Uh, but I knew everyone was like that. It was my time. I was positive. I was happy. I was watching my family on the stands. And yeah, I knew I had to do it. I don't know why. I think I took strange from somewhere I still don't know <laughs> and, and just went for it. My gait was amazing. Um, I didn't have those gates before. Uh, I was really, uh, I don't know, focused positive, motivated, and just did the, the gate right. And I had to just flow on the track because that track was huge. And the second, I remember coming um, out from the first turn and, and talking to myself, like, control yourself, <laughs> be patient, please, because that, that straight was, that was technical. It is still technical. So, yeah, I enjoyed that. That lap when I was done, I was really happy that that was finished. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, how loud the crowd was, and I don't know when you race, uh, you get so focused. Do you are you able? I know on the gate, I'm sure that's what they, they helped you a little bit because when they announced your name, the place went crazy. But when you were racing, could you hear that or how you know talk about what it was like while you were on the track for the lap? You say you were talking to yourself, so did you block everything else out? I normally don't hear anything. Um, sometimes I just hear my, my dad because he makes something special, so I know it does him. Um, but I regularly don't hear anything. I remember coming out of the first turn and talking to myself to be patient, to control that straight. And when I was jumping, I was hearing the stands because it was really close from the track and people was running crazy. And I remember last straight. We are just we were just racing on the stands like they were so close and I I could I yeah I could hear everyone <laughs> after I won and and everybody was crazy and I was watching my family they were all crying it was it was amazing and I was really happy that I won but I was I think happier that that was finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> after you after you crossed the line you came back and stood on the last straightaway. And it was, it was crazy on how loud, how loud the people were and how excited it was. So that, again, that was another one of those moments where I don't think you had to wait for it to sink in. You knew right then, right when you came across the line, even like I said, down the last straightaway, 
because you were racing, the, the stands were basically up against the fence in the last straightaway. Um, but what was the yeah. feeling like when you went back and you were able to see the crowd and, you know, wave to them and just hear how excited they were for you? I remember being so tired that I couldn't even move a little bit. <laughs> I remember uh, hugging Vince and then going back to the last straight to just wave and, and thank the people that were there and celebrate with them. I remember watching my family, they were all crying, all my aunts and uncles, they were there, uh, little cousins, and it was pretty amazing. It was really amazing to have them um, around me and to have all these people that they didn't watch a race before, they, they haven't been on a track before, and now they were experiencing that emotional day. So it was, it was pretty amazing, it was really cool and loud. <laughs> Well, I really hope we get to see that again pretty soon as we hopefully will get back to do some racing this year and uh, move forward towards the Olympics. We really appreciate the time and we really appreciate the insight to what you've done um, to see the emotion coming from you now. It uh, gives me a lot of memories too because, like I said, as I met you as a little girl, to see you, I think I was one of those people crying in Columbia a little bit too, maybe, at the finish line <laughs> when I had to interview but It was pretty interesting, but... Thank you so much for your time. And uh, do you have any last words? No, I just want to thank you guys um, for being interested in our lives now that everything is changing. I just want to be um, someone that tell you uh, if this is going to pass and we're going to be racing again and we're going to see each other again. For now, be safe and have fun. Enjoy your family. That's amazing. And hopefully we can be racing and in the game soon. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mariana. Thank you, Pete.